recorded on an artificial holiday created by a greeting card company. Welcome to the Microsoft Security Insight Podcast, recorded on February 14th, 2024. Good afternoon, Andrea. Good afternoon, Brody. Good afternoon, Roderick. How's everybody doing? Good afternoon, as opposed Good. to all of the afternoon. naturally created holidays that just happen out in the wild. I was going to say this, like, aren't all holidays artificially created? Yeah, well, this By is the greeting card company. Yeah. The greeting card company. <laughs> and, and, and the television show at that, right? <laughs> So almost, uh, I think Charlie Brown actually led this particular holiday, maybe. I don't get the reference, but sure. Charlie Brown, don't you remember? It's it's your Be My Valentine, Charlie Brown, the whole cartoon that came on every oh, yeah. single year. Yeah, yeah. The only yeah. Charlie Brown one is You're Good, is the pumpkin, great pumpkin. The pumpkin, yeah. The pumpkin. I don't like remember Christmas. the Valentine's one. I love when they were dancing <laughs> and some of the dances they were doing. Yeah, Charlie Brown. Yeah, just but like anyway. Charlie Brown's teacher, or like the want, want, want. That's basically a reenactment of every time anybody talks to me for greater than one minute. Yeah, that's <laughs> when everyone talks to me about investing money. That's what I do. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, it's not a, there's not a whole lot of want, want. People start off with two seconds at want, want. Right, but then I, I want want back. Want, want, want. Yeah. Insert funny text. All right, what do you what do you got a, a, a concentration ball in your hand there, Brody? What's uh, going on? A concentration ball. Yeah, let's call it a concentration ball. Yes, yeah. yes, I'm concentrating with my ball. Uh, what's going on? It's busy. It's busy this week. Uh, customers and security, and security and customers. Man, I really don't have anything fun to say. I'm working a lot on. Uh, I'm auditing an organization's Azure AD and Azure RBAC for privileged mm -hmm. roles, and we're mm -hmm. reporting on their trend over time as we've been working with them to see if you know they've been reducing privileged roles where necessary over time, and if they've been getting better or worse. Right. Uh, so that's been an interesting thing I started mm -hmm. working. I have been working on this week. And what else? What else? Um, I'm trying something new. I'm trying some. I'm trying to. Um, I work with two customers right now, and I'm trying to work primarily with one on one day and another one on another day. And I find it's like really helpful so that I can dig into stuff. It's not just be like jumbling calendars and meeting invites and be all over the place. Because like I went on a, a. I took a flight to Toronto last week. Uh, if if you watched or listened to last week's episode, you'll have, you'll have known that. And when I was on the plane, I, I expensed the Wi-Fi, and man, did I get a lot done in those like three and a half, four hours where nobody was bugging me. And I could just have beats in my phone, my ears, and I was just like hammering on the keyboard, getting stuff done. And I'm like, I need to do this more, you know, when I'm not in an airplane. So I'm trying that. I'm trying to like really isolate large chunks of time to get into stuff because yeah. once I get going, you can't stop me. But if you're, if I'm always stop and go. Uh, maybe it's because I'm just neuro spicy, but I just like I'm all I'm just flustered by the end of the day. I'm like, what did I even do today? So that's all. Yeah. That's all. A little tech, little little career advice. Yeah. So everyone, Franklin Grimberg, the co-creator of the podcast, is on, and he's saying, Edward, you know why I'm here. I, was hey, like, I don't. I, I, I don't know, Franklin. Why are you here? You want to explain that? It would have to do anything with. Uh, a particular exam that I'm supposed to be studying 19 hours a day for, right? I don't know. Do we need to bring him in? <laughs> uh, but I wasn't going to give a report on that this week, Franklin. Yeah, I told you this is this is later on. I, you and I talk. I told you I got time. Uh, the course is going well, Frank. I'm putting time in. And uh, my wife is making me stay on it. So uh, I'll go next since Franklin made me derail the call. Thank you, Bruce, yeah. for that. Uh, what am I doing this week? Um, finally, um, putting some real good time into trying to get ready for this exam. It's, um, I, I find it more interesting, in, so I'm taking my time with it. Um, I keep saying it incorrectly sometimes. I, I don't know why sometimes it's referred to as the S, S, uh, SEC 508 course at GIAC, and then sometimes it's considered a, the FOR, which is forensics. Maybe it's changed. I don't know. Uh, that's it. Um, what did I do? Uh, last week, was I home? Or was I? Well, we were in 
Seattle for a uh, something. Yeah, something like that. And came back home. What else have I been breaking on? Um, thanks, Trevor, once again, for getting me that information. I finally pulled the trigger and bought that VMware Advantage license. Uh, 200 some change. And um, um, I'm able to get vCenter, the latest uh, release, as well as uh, Workstation, because the Workstation license that comes with the course expires after 14 days. I see it in the class, right? Because the class is seven to six days, but if I'm doing it live on demand or online, I can't finish the course. So the crazy part about the course, they don't shorten the licenses because you decide to buy it and do it at home. It's 14 days because you're supposed to have a week in court in class and then a week to study and whatever. So I just bought a VMware license, I was done with it. And then uh, it took me a minute. I have, I haven't updated v, v speed or vCenter in so long. I should have called Trevor because it was uh, it was kicking my butt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He said Broadcom killed off VMware free yesterday. You damn right. They did. They're out of money. So uh, other than that, uh, I finished developing a Microsoft Defender for Cloud app course for my team. So I'm going to be instructing those guys. I wrote the course up. If it goes well, um, I'm going to do it for the other products. And I think my manager also wants me to hypothesize how Copilot would fit in the training. Right. I don't know how my head is going to get around that because I don't even know what it does inside of that. So I don't know. Um, that's it for me for for work. What about you, Andrew? Oh, for work. Gosh, um, great. Started meeting some of my new customers uh, who are as part of the Copilot for Security early access program, hearing what they've been doing with it. That's been super fun. Um, working on some uh, success criteria and use cases. What else? I don't know. Not too much. Attending. Um, there's always more training to do, so that kind of stuff. But I will say to all people listening live, you should probably not be listening live. You should probably be off buying flowers or picking up dinner for your significant other. Uh, uh, just invite them to the show. That's yeah, uh, that's you that's do a it gift together. The show just is just a gift right. everyone wants. Yeah, it's a gift that in a vacuum cleaner, right? Give them <laughs> yeah. Give a romantic date to Home Depot tonight. That's our <laughs> to date. All our, to all our, to all our, listen, don't at me. It was a joke, right? <laughs> e -e, don't don't get me. So that's that's it, right? Um, that's cool, Andrea. I yeah. did hear uh, several of my teammates are from Kansas City, so I did hear that there was a. Uh, a lot going on at the Super Bowl parade today that a lot of people had the uh, the flu today as they were attending the, uh, the Chiefs parade. That's right. The Super Bowl was Sunday. I, I watched the game at a friend's house and um, it's a good game. Uh, it, it was. It, it ranks up there. Um, I, that was a defensive game. It's been a while. It seems like all the Super Bowls are where the defenses come out. There are no more blowout games. There are no more run to score, you know. Yeah, he's, he's I was actually surprised Kansas City's defense played so well. I wasn't expecting that because San Fran's got so many weapons. So well, I, it's I, so I, interesting when two teams play in the regular season. You really don't get a sense of how they can actually play sometimes. You know what I mean? Because they're just, yeah, you know, it's just and, it's, and, it's and, weird and, how that works. And people play up. the The guy that won that yeah. F Super Bowl was the player Jones for Kansas City. Their nose tackle, or uh, you know, who was playing over center and rushing. And then he would move the defensive end on the five plays. Had he not gotten to the quarterback of San Francisco, there were people wide open, wide open. Yeah. And so it was so crazy. You see it on YouTube. People are analyzing and using analytics to look at the game and said, blah, 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 blah. Had this been completed, San Francisco's percentage to win would have went up. Had they got this pass, it would have went down. Yeah. I don't think there are a lot of people that understand how much technology influences how all these, these things work. I was telling someone at the party really quick that, and he played college at a high level, and then he played a little bit of pro, one of my neighbors. He played back then when you got a playbook. Your playbook now is a Surface device. So when they, cause when you got cut, they say, hey, bring your playbook to the office. Coach wants to see you. If you get someone's playbook, you got them. Even though they change the plays every year, you as long as they got this, you you have the base. And so 
Uh, that's why when you see them, when you see the offensive coordinator that they're doing, they're talking like this because people are recording them. And uh, now they, they give you surface so that when you get cut, they do it, right? So, anyway. I know someone who works on that team who, uh, who who builds those surfaces for the NFL on behalf of Microsoft. And apparently Tom Brady has the record for the most surfaces smashed. Yeah. I, I apologize I for leading this towards sports. So right. let's Rod move Trent. on. Let's bring our guest in. It's already Rod been so we go, we go yeah. for Rod first. Rod quick. I, I, I do have, have some it. administrivia that we need to kind of address before we move into our guest for tonight. Because we absolutely do have a guest. We didn't last we week. Uh, I think so. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see I'll hit maybe. a couple buttons. Maybe not the big red button that Brody hit last week. But I'll hit a couple buttons see if we actually have a, okay. have a guest. Okay. So I did mention last week I was going to be in Paris next month. Just want to let everybody know I will not be in Paris. I've opted to stay home for family. My wife and I celebrate our 34th wedding anniversary on the 24th, and we're going to hang Yay. out and do a weekend getaway. But then my daughter has is having our second um, grandbaby. And the reason why I'm going so slow at this because I'm actually – we love our grandkids. There's just a picture I just Aww. got of our grand boy we love our grandkids uh so we have a granddaughter that will be here the first couple weeks of march so i will uh definitely be in denmark next month but i will not be at the uh, paris location for the ai tour also i wanted to kind of mention that we just released the schedule for women in cyber for next month and it is Yay. stacked and packed we're literally having two shows a week next month and that's just it's all that goodness um super valuable but on march 13th we're taking a brief hiatus for women in cyber to celebrate something super special so you need to be here for that because it's going to be great um what was there was one other thing oh yeah right so march is women in cyber april is our partner month and discussions we've had so far, we're going to get a bunch of partners who have been working with Copilot for security, All right? So it's going to be a good month for the partners. Uh, May is certification and career month. And my guess is I think Edward will have a much better response for Frank sometime in May about certifications or that. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, will. And then we have like a build a lab month. Apparently we've, uh, We've designated July 2024 as Brody's month. It's Canada month. We're just going to have just people from Canada, Microsoft Canada. That's it. Maybe so, August. We'll see how it goes. Bring your yeah. toques. Yeah. yeah. Bring right. your toques in summer. Well, that's yes. all I got. Let's, right. um, <laughs> anything else? Did I miss something? I didn't miss anything. I captured everything, I think. We'll put it in I show want notes. to invite to the stage, and maybe uh, we'll allow him to introduce himself. This is Andre. Good day, Andre. Welcome. Hey, Hello, everyone. Um, Andre, hey, I'm Andre. Yeah. Well, Andre, from what part of the world are you joining us from? Yeah, great question, Edward. <laughs> I'm joining you all from Auckland. So um, nice. I'm just at a Microsoft office in Auckland. Um, yeah. It's, uh, and it's a bit of, yeah, I'm not originally from here. So I'm, I'm Brazilian and I'm just here. Um, yeah, of course, I moved here a few years back. Yeah. I saw great I'm city. Zealand, New Zealand. There you go. That New works. Zealand, yeah. New right. Zealand, yeah. And it's a very sunny day today, so we're enjoying summer over weekend. That's right. You guys are opposite climate from yeah. the northern hemisphere of a sort, right? Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's it's summer down there for you. And still, summer going into fall. Yeah, because it's yeah. in spring. Yeah, so that works. Anyway, Andre, I have been sort of trolling you on LinkedIn, watching your post and everything, so I reached out to you. Oh, and yeah. I said, yeah, I said, hey, would you like to come on the show? And plus, you that was the guy. Now, now, now he knows who it was. That was yeah, it was guy. me, right? So, <laughs> Edward, what was it about Andre's posts that intrigued you so much? Um, now he put me on the spot. There's so many that I troll him about. Which one was it? Or did I come in, come in and on it, Andre? That's it. Might have, been a, might, have, might have been one of the videos, I believe, but yeah. Yeah, it might be one of the videos. I, I I saved them all so I can go back in there. So my save stuff is in there. It was one about your XDR experience and looking at how um, you, I think it was one you were writing on detections. So you, you recommented on somebody else's post and then wrote something else about it. So when I saw it, I want you to come on and talk about 
you know, what you do, how you, how you go about uh, executing your role. Um, thanks, Andrew, for putting me on the role. I can't remember now. I should have had it in my notes. <laughs> Moving me up, but when I saw it, I immediately reached out. But I, but the, the other thing was, um, Andre had reached out to us, I think, prior to me going and ask him and then looking. But didn't you hit us up on Friends of the Show, MSI? And, and that's yeah, so, yeah, I created a, an internal Teams chat just to confirm if I could could do something on the Discord channel, right? So I had some some insights to share on the to the Discord channel, and I reached out to you guys. So yeah, because when I because yeah. when I saw it, I'm like, who's this dude? And then I realized I had been following <laughs> you on LinkedIn, right? I'm like, oh, this dude. And then like, oh, that's that's the guy right there. So well, thank you for 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 you know, pinging us and having us go back and realize who you are. But tell us why you're on the show. What what happened bad in your life? You ended up on this show. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the invite, Edward. Um, and of course, the wider team as well. It's a, it's a pleasure to to be amongst you. Uh, yeah, you, you were you were all legends amongst our groups here. So amongst the TS is the technical specialists, which is my role. Uh, we we listen to to the podcast, but we also consume a lot of the content you put out because. You know, I was just telling Andre before, but uh, you guys come up with great research and great posts that become references to a lot of conversations that we have, right? Um, and yeah, so what I've been doing that um, it's been really interesting is just catching up on everything that Microsoft has announced at Ignite. Been doing a lot of work around yeah, uh, distilling hey, everything that we released, and of course, just uh, making sure that we, we can communicate all of these. Um, advancements and all this strategy to to my customers. Yeah, so that's that's been pretty pretty uh, full on, I would say, over the last few months. So it's interesting that you mentioned that because I, I hear that quite a bit, not just from our customers, <clears throat> but just also from our own people. Of you know, we develop things so quickly, and there's a lot of new features. So how how do you keep up on it? Is it mostly external resources or is it a bunch of internal things that you participate in? How do you how do you do that? Yeah, that, that's a great question, Rod. Uh, it's a mix of them. Um, internally, we have we're lucky to, to be part of boot camps. So we're often invited in our roles to join boot camps. So we, we can learn about um, right from the product teams generally or GBBs and experts such as Edward, I believe. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So we, we just get to, to hear from people who are very close to the development of this product products sometimes. But um, I've, I've joined Microsoft um, a couple of years back, and they're, well, they're, the security stack was already uh, pretty mature at that point. And so learning about everything that had been released prior to my uh, my joining of the company, that's where yeah open and public resources come come handy right? because um, there'll be a lot of uh, good resources, um, of course, in the Microsoft Learn uh, page, which I refer back to and, and, and I leverage a lot. Uh, and of course, you in a lot of the field comes up with public research as well, right? So your, your must learn series is something that I'm always, it's always in my, my to-do reading, reading, particularly the AI series that you do. That's, that's something else that we always, that I always look up to. Yeah, by virtue of you saying the folks on the show, the prolific content creators are Andrea and Rod, right? Brody and I just sort of troll and, <laughs> and get the sure. crumbs, right? It, it would take me and Brody together a week to create one blog, I think. We just we just haven't released your inner beast yet, that's all. Your inner that's content beast. Yeah. Inner content beast means co-pilot. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so Andre, you, you're, you're RTS. And I, I'm not going to make the assumption, but I'll ask: Are you TS for the Defender stack, all up and down? And, and yeah, it, it's a great question because um, we 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 have security TSs, we have um, compliance TSs or purview TSs. Um, my role actually entails a little bit of everything, even uh, the geography and how our territory works here. But uh, so I, I actually have to understand a little bit of everything. So that's why I. I focus on Defender, I focus on Defender for Cloud, Sentinel. Sentinel has been uh, one of my big focuses for the last uh, couple couple years, I would say. Um, but also Entra at some points, right? So I've been having really uh, good conversations with customers about Entra and of course Purview as well, which has been yeah, 
Fairview in itself has been a tool that um, yeah, a lot of customers, yeah, yeah Brody. <laughs> Uh, if you want, if you want AI, you need Purview, right? Essentially, so that's that's why, right? Uh, really picking up, yeah. Yeah. So Can't it's about information about security, very important, very important. Yeah. Super yeah, important, yeah. actually. Yeah. These guys um, all made fun of me, Andre, for years. Like, yeah, Brony works in compliance. Brony well, works and, in and compliance. You say so now it's and all you say like, oh, security, security, though. You say yeah. information yeah. security, though. Isn't it really kind of data security? Right. It's both. Well, I guess it's both. I suppose, yeah. yeah, data and information and whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yes. Did we debate that already? That they're not necessarily the same. Those on one of the shows. Information is what I have in my head. Data is yeah. physical. Um, so we have a question from that M three sixty five guy, and oh, yeah. Rod, you want to throw it in there while I read it? I got it. Uh, it said to our listeners, if you wanted to study a master class for Defender for Cloud Apps. What would you recommend? Seems to be a lot of potential that orgs yeah. don't take advantage of. Oh, maybe that's for me since I'm the MCAS guy. But let's go with our guest first. If you would create a masterclass for MCAS, AKA Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, how would you go about it? That's a, that's a great question. So I always look into the Ninja trainings first. Right? So that, that's a good yes. yeah, material that's already created. Um, and I always talk to my customers to leverage that first. Um, then I would I would look at M365 guy. I would also look into um, the Microsoft certifications because they have curated paths and created paths that explain a lot of important concepts around these technologies, not just around the Pinterest for Cloud Apps, but um, that will definitely entail that sort of technology. And after that, well, after that, we could, we could get broader, but um, I think it would, yeah. That's not the point. The point would be to, to get deeper. But what would you do, Edward? Um, considering I just wrote it by a training series or, or set of sessions for my team, I approached it in a manner of my primary role of what would a threat hunter and an incident responder look for by using the Defender for Cloud applications? So I went in and looked at some of the more relevant detections and alerts, and then made the training of why is this important? Why is it impossible travel? Why is a normally file upload and download? Why is there suspicious OAuth or API things? So I wrote it in, in a manner of practicality rather than feature feature reference of, of the product, right? Because I don't, let me make sure I say this right. All the features are great to be in a product, but how many of them do you actually use? I wanted to use the one that may be more relevant to a threat hunter uh and 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 more of an investigator forensics than someone who is a day-to-day -day admin you can go in and learn how to block applications and make them monitor it and do custom detections by doing integrations with mde now i can't i'll speak for franklin on the call franklin's listening i think his approach would be how does it integrate and make things like mde better when i first joined microsoft uh, MCAS was the thing, and I, I love the way it integrated with compliance because I used to call it AIP's cousin because um, AIP wants to integrate it. MCAS was the enforcer, so I liked it that way. So I like I like looking at the master class by going in and doing the ninja trainings and then maybe diving down to more of the alerts and why the alerts exist. A lot of the alerts are no longer alerts. They are behavior indicators now. They have been deprecated. And they don't alert anymore. But so if you go to the learn and look at those things like impossible travel, anonymous log, and all those, those aren't alerts anymore. They're they're, they're behavioral uh, entities or some sort. I think the name. So they they're trying to get rid of the false positives, right? So that's how I would do it. And the last thing, get a trial and spin it up. It's zero yes. deployment. Yes. The effort is almost nothing, right? And just get yeah. it in there. And it's and it's good for the bean counters for the, the C suite. Because when you do it, there's an executive report after you let it run a while that you can just spit out what it, it has discovered running in your operational environment. And the number that of apps that you see used is never the number that the customer said they have. It's always like five to ten times you know, more than they have, right? Oh, That's yeah. how I would do it. It's tons. That's great advice. And I love spinning up the lab. And yeah, but anytime you show security leadership, any leadership, the results of those scans, it's eye-opening. 
Now, I know I think a lot of them, you get a lot of like advertisement apps that aren't really doing anything, you know, but then there's like, you know, that sketchy file sharing app that somebody's uploading seven gigs to. And it's just like, what's this? Right. And like those types of things you need to look into. Right. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I, yes, when you start sorting by those columns, you start seeing the, the potential for data exfiltration and even data infiltration really, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's that's important. Um, and the risk scores are interesting on, on MDCA or MDA, I guess it is. Uh, it's, it's generated through open source intelligence. So sometimes like, like what's a good example, uh, mega, in the in New Zealand, Andre Mega, a controversial file repository SaaS service, uh, doesn't adhere to a lot of privacy laws by default because they want to be kind of gray area, right? And so if you have users using a service like that, it's mm -hmm. not exactly good for the enterprise, right? You want to be using a more robust enterprise grade service. So you could still have um, legitimate and air quotes apps, but they don't necessarily meet the security or compliance requirements of your organization, and that can leave you up to uh, Know, potential issues down the road if you've got people using them so it's it's a extremely useful and eye-opening eye -opening, yeah. and, uh, and to go back to what brody said we'll go into the next topic um data exfiltration especially when the, when the user did, does it inadvertently they're not being nefarious one customer was like what is going on but it exposed something else that the that the end user had too many localized admin rights on the machine to be able to arbitrarily install any software they wanted. What they thought was a data exfiltration, the person was backing up their laptop using uh, Carbonite to, bar to back up that stuff. So it looked crazy that the file was so large going up, right? They were just trying to protect the machine. So you learn about, oh, we're open permissioning people on the endpoint. Maybe we need to go lock down some stuff with Intune or something so they can install these arbitrary applications, right? Because that's a DLP motion. You know, good. In, what is that? The pathway to hell is paid with good intentions. So there you go, right? Uh, so, so let's 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 ask a question. Since that M three sixty guy, that M three sixty five guy is now my favorite because he he loves MCAST. So there we go. What is your favorite product, Andre? We're not going in the show. We're asking in the middle. Oh uh, yeah. Um, my my favorite product. Oh, it's um, I like the XDR solution, right? Uh, not a product. Per se, yeah, the entire yeah. thing. And just well, how it's, it's explain that because I think we talk about that a lot recently, and I think Microsoft talks about it a lot. And that we, I think we yeah. just kind of assume people know what we're talking about. What is this X, XDR solution? Yeah, so th that's a good point. So, product wise, we, we would traditionally think of a solution or product that uh, mitigates specific risks and threats. Um, and the evolution, for example, in one of these domains that are encompassed within XDR. Um, the solution for endpoint security, for example, traditionally has evolved from antivirus to uh, monitoring and endpoint detection response, EDR, right? Completely monitoring of endpoints uh, to a point where that alone wasn't just um, enough for proper threat hunting and proper response um, to, to large environments. Um, but at, at some you know, at some point, the industry started looking at other domains as well and mo how monitoring other domains within user infrastructure, right? So think of how users interact with cloud apps, for example, right? We're talking about Defender for Cloud Apps. It's another domain that users interact with SaaS applications, for, for example, um, that generates a lot of monitoring data that at some point in the attack chain uh, might be related to an endpoint uh, threat, for example. Um, if we extend this conversation even further to an email, which is how users interact with emails, uh, of course, email, there, there will be a lot of signals and, and, and data that comes from threats coming from emails. Um, if we, when we start monitoring just that domain alone, again, it's challenging to try and scale large operations and threat hunt just on that domain. So when we, we when we start looking at this domain separately, we get a lot of challenges to effectively threat hunt and be um, effective in our operations generally. So combining all these different domains into one solution set that is natively integrated, uh, that it's easy to to integrate and to consume data from and to query, uh, all from one portal, right? Um, that's that's really powerful. Now that's that's why I love. The Defender XDR solution set because it encompasses all these different domains. And now Microsoft since Ignite 
has announced, of course, the integration of Defender, uh, Defender for Cloud alerts into the Defender XDR portal. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's already GA, right? So all, every customer is already benefiting from it already. So that's really exciting. And then, of course, we start seeing even what's in private preview, which was also announced at Ignite, such as uh, the unified Sigma XDR experience. So seeing where that solution is going, that's, that's, that really excites me. And that's why it's my favorite solution, I guess. You know, one other thing is um, when you look at it, not my comment, but someone made the funniest comment who's in this, uh, who's in the industry. He said, this was it. We were talking about Copilot. He said, Microsoft created the cure, then they went and created the, the problem. And I, and I laughed. I, said, I don't get where you're going. He said, the Defender portal is so robust now. You can't do it by yourself. It can overwhelm teams. I mean, security mm -hmm. teams. That the Defender portal is like everything's coming in there. And so you need help. So inadvertently, they created a, they, they created a fix. Then by virtue of them creating a the problem. Um, and I've heard some people say that why the Defender and the, the close to the single pane of glass is, is where, where it is. Uh, and they like it. I think that some security operators or practitioners are somewhat intimidated of the Defender portal. There's a lot going on inside of that, right? And um, and then if yeah. you were to survey your companies, I asked Andrea first, how many people, how many of your customers, Andrea, actually use the advanced hunting tab in Defender to the point where it's, it's useful to them? Not many, that's for sure. I would say maybe 25%. And that's, I believe that's generous, right? So some type of, you know, assistance with it, right? You could you could take compliance and make it its own division inside using our back to say, they just use that or what, I'm sorry, you don't even need our back. You can go to the compliance portal, whole teams and just build a career in there. Yes, I, 100%. I don't and really you should. If you're large enough, you should have people doing that. You can't just have like one guy, like Noodle. <laughs> do everything yeah it's got to be it's got to be separate roles and you know the single pane of glass thing is interesting i heard a really good uh, comment on the azure security podcast friends of the show um, someone said you know we're all chasing this coveted single pane of glass and you know there's a lot of merging of alerts and information that's happening right now and that's all great but um you know single pane for one isn't single pane for another necessarily right so how about a customizable single pane for me versus a single pane for you you know, oh, really so in. snap in kind of like the old MMC. We're going back to like, you know, eighties yeah. or nineties. Remember that? That was great. That was we great. Should absolutely yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you could move it around on the screen the way you want it. Right. Um, and I like that a lot. So for all this integrations coming in, yeah, it's a lot. Right. But like maybe your role doesn't require X, Y, or Z. And maybe the more granular RBAC permissions on or RBOC. Someone told me it's called RBOC and not RBAC. So anyway, that's a new that's a new fun pronunciation battle. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe the granular that? RBOC permissions on uh, on the portal don't get rid of enough to like make it more streamlined for you. I'd love to see like you have the ability as an individual identity have your own customized portal, right? For what you need it for. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, Azure sort of does it right when you can customize the landing when you when you log in, color and all that. Right. Um, you sure we can't do that? I don't, I don't, yeah, I guess you can't. I think you can. But we need to can't do that. Oh, can no. I don't know if you can in there, but like I've been wrong before. I, Andrew shook her head. No, I, I I thought based on rights and stuff I, you could, because then save the topic for another one. I thought inside settings. In in one, I'll, I'll look it up as we go to something else. I could have sworn there's something like when you slide from when you have defender experts. That's what it is. You give them permission. You still can't do it that way, either, Andrea. Oh, well, maybe for defender experts. Yeah, but, I think okay. if you enable defender experts, something comes up. Yeah, you it does, and you give the experts permission to do things in your environment. That's the only way it manifests. You're right. You, you can't be done yet. You can move things around on the summary page, like the home page. That's okay. I just think there could be more, right? Like you could like the option to maybe even cut out some of the stuff on the left, right? Like, hey, I don't really go into. I don't know, yeah. If you're a large enterprise and you don't touch email and collaboration <clears throat> in your well, personal role, like get rid of it, you know, yeah. or just or have, have more streamlined. It'd be, it'd be neat. Yeah. Think of it like 
the Azure portal where you create your own dashboards. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Own dashboard later. Yeah. I, I, I could swear you could do it. Maybe I just I'll hallucinate it. <laughs> that thought That's, it was dear. Not abnormal. Well, we have roles, right? And roles can have some somewhat help. Roles can help, right? Yeah. So, so specific yeah. roles can can remove or add the ability to do certain mm -hmm. things for sure. And then, from a visual standpoint, giving giving that 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 power user, that analyst, or whomever, whatever you want to call them, the ability to, you know, make make their land make it their landing page. You know, so when they come in in the morning or in the evening, whatever their shift is, like they've got everything they need right there. Just give it a bit more bit more flexibility. Like if you're creating dashboards on on Sentinel, that's really cool, right? Um, but but it'd be cool to have similar kind of features within. Well, but even in Sentinel, you can't change that static entry page, right? I mean, you can yeah. you can choose what your entry is. I could choose to use the URL to my entry point would be that that workbook or whatever. But at least right. that front static page, you can't change that. No, you can't. I I, I knew that. I, I tried to do that. You, know, you can land on the last page you serve, and once it authenticate you, you back at, like you said, I, I would bookmark certain workbooks. So I went right to them, right, and do that. But to change it, you can't do that. So, so Andre, in your day-to-day, -day, you say you do it all. You know, you're the compliance guy. You're the threat guy. You're the, you're the, you're the signal bit. guy. Come you're on. the defender for cloud guy. You're the quantum computing no. guy. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> you know, you write code. You know, you're doing all these things, right? You're the DevOps guy. What's keeping you busy? Besides all of that, <laughs> yeah. um, oh, the customer engagements generally. Uh, so I, I try to keep regular cadence with my customers, um, and then of course keeping up with um, how some of these conversations, um, yeah, can can help them achieve their goals, right? So that, that's something, but that's that's work wise, right? So that's that's my day to day as well. Um, we also have a quite an interesting kind of need here from a TS perspective, which is to uh, learn to not learn, but create something to educate our, our peers as well, right, uh, Edward? So, for example, me and a colleague of mine and my my team were we're working on condens. Well, that's not the right word, but uh, just creating the, the the right messaging around all our security stack, right, to our peers. So that's that's something. That's on our mind as well because look at look at all of us. We have so many different solutions, different technologies. But to 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 our peers, how do we simplify some of that message uh, to some of the conversations that they might need to have with their uh, with their stakeholders, right? So that's something that's that's also keeping me busy, right? So trying to communicate that properly, create a message that will resonate with uh, with them. I like that, Andre. Uh, we have that in our security service line team. It's we uh, we've gone with um, uh, mentor mentee kind of relationships. So if you've got a more senior individual in the team who's been around and they've got great ideas, we pair them up with a more junior member of the team who's just cut joining the team, either joining Microsoft for the first time or joining from a different area, to try to like bridge that knowledge gap. And maintaining an internal team training repository always seems to be such a difficult thing to do. Um, I think the CSU actually does a pretty good job with training their their teams pretty well on some on some items, mm -hmm. um, but I, I've been there. We actually had that on a, a topic as a, on an offsite recently. Like, hey, well, how about we create our own training repository? But then, like, someone's got to own it, and it's got to be updated, and people have to take time away from that. It's you know. It's, it's, it's oh yeah, yeah. Mindful that it's yeah. You know, we wouldn't create the content from scratch, right? But just creating yeah, the the key message points for. For them, right? So that's, yeah, that that's, that would that would be the goal. But what's what else could be? It's been keeping me busy, skilling up on AI, right? I'm I'm sure everyone hears. That? <laughs> well, that that was a question in the in the chat. Um, yeah, has um, your role yeah. changed with the introduction of the various copilot technologies? Somebody's we're all on the same page here. We're sharing the same brain, apparently. So yeah, absolutely. Should should I jump in? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a, that's a great question. Um, it's an ever changing uh, kind of role as well, right? So as we as we develop new technologies and have these new uh, products coming along, we we have to understand how that will overlap with current discussions and, and and solutions as well. So that's how it's changed. 
yeah, first and foremost, created a whole new domain for us to, to have to understand about, right? So um, just, just looking at uh, fundamental functioning of AI technologies. For example, what, what, um, what the introduction of Copilot for security has done to my role and to me, for example, is uh, the need for me to skill up on AI. And that's why, for example, I went for the AI 900 certification late last year. Yeah, so that, that and that's a great content, by the way, for anyone that needs just fundamental uh, understanding of machine learning, uh, some services. Oh, say, 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 save that for our certification month. We'll have you back to talk oh, about cool. that. Save that one. Yeah, yeah. but so, so that, that's changed in my role. So needing to look at wider domains, right? Um, which ordinarily, you know, haven't been touched by security yet. Um, uh, and, and it's creating a lot of new conversations as well with customers. Like I mentioned at the beginning of, uh, of the call, uh, Purview, right? So it's reignited a lot of Purview conversations. Uh, it's created ways and Ignite uh, was yet again uh, an event that showcased how core Purview is to adoption and secure adoption of AI. Um, and so just being on top of everything that, um, that we have in our technology stack and our solutions that can uh, help our customers adopt AI securely. Uh, that's that's a big shift in our, well, our, our role from a year past, I would say. Yeah. Okay. I will say okay. one of the things that I think has been interesting, just as I talk to customers about things with uh, Copilot for security or the different, you know, Copilot for N365 is, you know, like I had a question today, um, can I use Copilot for security to ask Intune if there are, you know, a certain device has conflicting policies? And I was like, yes, but you know, you can already do that in Intune today, right? You can go in and find that in Intune today. And I, I think in some ways it shows how vast the products are and that, so there are so many things that you can do. You may not know how to do them. So in some ways we need to continue our education in the tools, but the great way to is being able to ask a natural language question and say, tell me this, that way I don't know, have to I either don't have to find and learn documents, figure out where to go in the portal for all that kind of stuff, right? So I do think it's gonna be um, really great to help with those edge use cases for things like, do I have duplicate policies or conflicting policies or things like that? Well, and, and I, get the, I get the confusion, right? From Copilot for Security, people that wanna use it, because what is Windows uh, or Copilot in Windows is what it's called. What does Copilot in Windows do for you? It says, hey, how do I change my printer? You know, that's if it's a Copilot for security, you're thinking, hey, how do I do this security piece, right? So I can kind of see where that might kind of bleed over into some confusion. I uh, am personally, oh, I'm sorry, Andrea. No, I, Go ahead, Brody. thank you. Um, personally, I'm using, um, well, Ever since our meeting last week, it's basically like, hey, everybody, just just use all the copilots like as much as you can <laughs> to get educated on them, right? And I'm like, you know what? Fine. So I got back, and on Monday, I'm just like, I'm just gonna use it for everything. Um, so like, we've got, I had to do some reports, and I'm trying to get it to make tables for me. It doesn't really work all that great right now. But I'm like, okay, I'll do it manually. Um, I'm coming up with project um, phased project dead uh, like key deliverables. I'm coming up with like scenarios for why we. Do, the te what how many test users we need in this type of scenario. I'm coming up with all kinds of things and I'm learning how to prompt on it really well. And it's just like, I'm, we're just like working together and it's getting me most of what I need and then I fine tune it in the end. And, mm -hmm. and then recently um, for customers who let us record or at least turn on the transcript, I, I used to take notes all the time because I, my memory is like a goldfish, okay? Um, and so, so my mom taught me this write everything down. And so I wrote everything down in one note. And I'd spend most of the meeting just hammering on the keyboard, writing things down. People could hear me at the back of the room, just like, <sighs> right? And if we got transcript on, it does a pretty darn good okay. job of actually capturing things. As long as you're clear in the meeting, like, okay, Brody will do this and Andre will do that. And Andre's committing to this. It does a pretty good job of like hitting all the notes and then showing up the follow-up items. And I'm feeling like the sense of like, so much busy work is like kind of dissolving or at least being being um being uh being uh, uh heavily heavily dissolved in, in a way that it kind of frees me up for more important things which is generally what the whole point of copilot is supposed to be for but but i think i'm like you personally and i think a lot of people are that way as well when you write stuff down you remember it if you allow copilot to do it for you 
will you actually retain that or do you have to always go back and look for that thing, right? That's and I will point. say, you have to enunciate clearly on those because sometimes there's some gets- It's constant at me. Yeah. has threesome and that is never- <laughs> Yeah, you could be offended really easy by a co-pilot. Uh, yeah, that's the reason I like it. Um, I, I, I think I am using it more. Uh, Raw, you and I talked over the weekend because yep. we were trying to trying to figure out the differences in my lab. I decided to deploy 365 uh, co-pilot, uh, and it's three hundred sixty dollars a year for one, for one license. Yep. And uh, you know, I I, I drop. Chat GPT, the paid version. I may go back and add it because there is a little bit of comparison stuff that is worth maybe the expense. You can write it off. But yep. once you get it into your environment, uh, and I got a trivia question for everybody over here too. Once you get in your environment, I found myself not being able to navigate because I it's so good for everything that you try to do everything. But when I narrowed it down just to do the things that I needed to do, like for my job, then it was very useful, right? I kept trying, I stopped experimenting of a sort. I'm like, eh, that's good. It doesn't do PowerPoints very well. You know, uh, so if it's trying to do that, that's yeah. that's awful. But if you're trying to do something in Word, Excel, um, and 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 you go through it, it is pretty it's pretty awesome because I was trying to figure out how to do a formula to be able to do some sums. It did it right there, right? But if you try to tell it, go make me a PowerPoint presentation, do this, you know, you gotta a cat riding a dinosaur with some things on his hand, right? So I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, don't I don't want that. Uh, I, so I, I like it for what it can do. It, it and the best feature that I like, Teams, is noise, especially at Microsoft. It is just a den of noise. I don't make the meeting, and I love hitting summarize what I missed, and it just comes down I'm like that. This is awesome. I like this right here, right? It can even say. Someone asked Ed a question, but he didn't answer. <laughs> or all the all the follow up items are assigned to Ed. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. <laughs> it, it literally says someone asked Edward a question, but he didn't answer. Right? I like now that's cool, <laughs> and it's bad at the same time. But that, um, Andre, I, I want to ask you one more question, and this is about how you go about your business. Yeah, of, of, uh, in your role, do you cover? New Zealand exclusively, or are you covering APAC or EMEA? What is your coverage right. range? Yeah, good, good question. It's uh, it's New Zealand uh, as a as a whole, right? So, um, of course, I have all, I have customers in, in Auckland, some are in Wellington, the capital. Mm -hmm. uh, so public sector, um, which yeah, and some are, are in South Island as well. So yeah, Christchurch and other places as well. Um, just January, I flew down to to see one of these customers. So that's that's always always good to cover the entire country from that perspective. But yeah, but uh, I do a little bit of uh, all kinds of sectors. Um, well, yeah, yeah, we try to keep a community open as well to to relevant customers that are part of the same sectors. Uh, okay. That's that's something that I try to do as well, um, running a community for them and helping them find information that is relevant. For their challenges amongst peers from their, their similar sector. Yeah. I um I asked that question because you know we get very myopic here in the states, like our ways the way. But sometimes the way you know, and it, Brody probably encounters this more than anybody else on the show because he's actually consulting and he's dealing with different personalities. But Andrew worked in SLG, Rob was just evangelizing across and everything, and I had like. You know, here in the, you know, I cover the South and cover RCG retail consumer goods. You're saying the same thing, but sometimes the delivery is different. Because the way I talk to people in retail or retail consumer goods is not the way I talk to people in FSI. You got to change the delivery. They yeah. don't want to hear anything you're talking. The reason that's the reason I asked you the question: If you were covering other regions, like if you had to cover APAC, or you had to cover Australia or someone else, you're saying the same thing, but do you have to change the delivery? But it sounds like you have to do it because. You know, New yeah, Zealand is not a large place in the grand scheme of things, right? Yeah, but it's, it's larger that lets us know how small we are in the world. But it's things like you cover SLG, private, public, uh, all of those things, right? Do you have the delivery? Do you have to alter your delivery to capture your audience? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, so, and we oftentimes we, we have specific 
teams as well for, for of course these accounts and uh, being in sync with these teams help help me helps me understand how to tailor my delivery properly to, to each of these domains I would say so okay and it's yeah it's, it's a skill that uh, that we always need to exercise I believe right um, and of course as we as we expand our, our customer base and the types of customers we work with yeah it's a it's a much needed skill in in a technical specialist uh role i would say yeah it's a good question because okay. uh, it, it's it's a challenge right uh, yeah because wh when you go to to bank a customer or um, some something i covered uh, before uh you, you have to understand the compliance scenario that they are under of course uh and then there are specific uh uh well standards but not not just standards but also expectations from a government perspective and how they operate that all these kind of pieces they do not for example uh, apply to necessarily public sector customers so understanding the context to the customer and their priorities at that at that point is really something that that needs to be done before we even start engaging on on any conversation because their their challenges is what we, we want to help with and yeah, understanding the context is key. And that was a very deliberate question. I got to sit on a call with yeah. some of my peers that operate out of APAC, uh, Japan yeah. specifically, and that room is totally different than the way that you deliver. It, it, it is a totally different way. That it was the way conversations went. So I just wanted to ask that, um, yeah. you know, how that how that goes. I don't want to come over there and come to one of your meetings and do a full pie. You like damn Americans. <laughs> You know, you know, I don't want to do that, but uh, uh, yeah, it's yeah, I, I gotta be over there. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. So, how big is your team? Uh, well, my team, the security team here. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, we are six, seven, yeah, six or seven. Okay, that's decent. Size. That, that so that includes TS. So we're two TSs, uh, four specialists, uh, and, mm -hmm. and, our, and our manager. So it's yeah. So, okay. so why is your favorite country Italy? Italy. <laughs> oh, Sorry, but you have the flag behind you. Oh yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's the office. It's just the office room. Yeah, that's, that's I caught that too. Uh, like he's pretty <laughs> Brazilian, <laughs> living he's in trying New to make Zealand, a statement. Yeah. Repping Italy. I know, right? Yeah. yeah, all right. <laughs> but uh, funny fact, I'm actually what I've been watching Ted Lasso these days. I don't know if you like this show. Well, you're catching up. Yeah. So right. So that. And it's my wife and I've been uh, essentially marathoning it, um, and they're at the season three. And there's this player that's inspired by Ibrahimovic. He was a big player uh, in Europe. Yeah. Um, and I was just watching and catching up on his career at Milan, right? So which is an Italian team. Um, and I've just been watching, uh, yeah, showcases of his his performance at Milan recently. So that that's quite interesting. <laughs> but, yeah. Unre unrelated well, note on, on Italy here. Yeah. As we wrap up, Edward, you promised us early that you were going to tell us the story of why there are no flowers at your house on Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. I, I misspelled Valentine. Oh, my goodness. No, I'm so embarrassed. Go ahead, Val Valentine. Good. Someone else Valentine. can't spell beside myself. Uh, <laughs> there are no flowers in my house on Valentine's Day because there are always flowers here. I buy my wife flowers every Sunday. He takes Without them out fail. just for Valentine's Day so she doesn't. I, I no, there are always flowers in my house. Andrew, you visit if you pay notice in the kitchen, and as soon as you walk inside the foyer, every Sunday fresh flowers in the house. And my wife hates roses; absolutely I detests do. roses. Does not like them. So tulips, um, yeah. um, lilies, all types of lilies, Cali lilies, flowering lilies. She loves that. Uh, but no roses in the house. And one of our really, really sweet neighbors just brought us some daffodils over yesterday because they know we like flowers. So if you come to our house and you walk into our sunroom, it's a jungle now. We, we're collecting all type of plants. So we're in there. So to, to Brody and to old Trevor, I do take care of my plants. I water my plants every Wednesday without fail. And I talk to them. Yep. That's nice. That's yep. nice. What a great And story. so uh, that's why there, there are no flowers because I, I do the things, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. And plus, I like flowers too. I just that's just flowers me. are nice. I like plants. Yeah, flowers. I like plants. Yeah. So, uh, but I bring a rose in here. Yeah, that'd be the, that'd be the end of me. I, and I don't ask her why she doesn't like roses. Better not to ask, right? And do that. So <laughs> just, that is just go why. with it. Yeah. Mm, just just go with it. 
But hey, we are at the greeting card day. We're gonna give everybody a little bit of time back. I think Rod wants to say something whenever he puts the pen up, wrong sign in, sticks it in his mouth. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, no, I got nothing to say. It, it is Valentine's Day though. I mean, yeah. You have someone special, you should uh go do that thing. You mm-hmm. should take take their flowers away this time and yeah, yeah. Give flowers, flowers. Because we get flowers all week long anyway. I, every go to the spot, they see me coming, they already know. They get it going. But we didn't ask anybody what they were doing, so we do have three minutes left. Uh oh, Brody looks very Brody excited. wants to go. He's so excited. <laughs> I'm going with my wife. We're going to go by uh, trim to renovate the nursery. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. So, that's yeah, awesome. so, so I, I just had to go outside and shovel out the back of the truck and put a tarp down because I couldn't get all the snow out. And uh, we're going to go. So it's going to be our Valentine's Day date. It's the Home Depot. Are you going with the traditional? Are you doing, you know, the traditional pink blue? Or are you going to go more neutral? And oh, Andrea. I'm glad you asked that. I will get a copy of my wife's mood board that she has created oh, for the broad design of the room because interior design is one of her things. And uh, you will be amazed at the time and the thought that's gone into this. I mean, I've looked at so many different swatches of dark green recently that, uh, you know, it's 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 amazing. Don't worry. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic. There'll be some pink. I feel, I, I feel like I should uh, I should contribute since I want to be the godfather of this child. You know, I need to go ahead and do my yeah. part. Yes. Contribute to the cause. Everything. Sure. Rod, we already know what you're gonna be doing since your wife came in and gave you a big old smooch at the beginning of the show. Well, I was at our during our meeting. It wasn't at the beginning of the show. It was earlier though. So. Okay. Yeah. She smooches me all the time. There's smooches in our house all the time. Uh, so I just take the smooches away on Valentine's Day. And and and, and I'm going to go cook lasagna. Yeah. I've never cooked lasagna oh, in my life. There you go. You tell me. And I cook. Uh, so I'm, right. I'm gonna not, I'm gonna give it a shot. You've done it right? before. You just be careful. Yeah. yeah it's something you've not, not done yet. I, don't know. I screw it up. I may have to go out and get flowers. Andre, what about you? What are you doing today, bud? Oh, for the weekend. Uh, my wife and I are going for our delayed Valentine Day celebration. That's so that that's the plan. Perfect. We do the same thing. We <laughs> we uh we push it out. Yeah, we push it out. <laughs> yeah. Too, too much. Yeah. Every place. Yeah. Every place we try to go to on Valentine's is going to be crowded. We're not a fan. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. And, and and to go out today is a waste of money. You get a yeah. three can meal. You spend five hundred bucks. You you mad at the service. I'll I'll try my hand at cooking, and if it doesn't work, we we'll eat. We'll get some lemon pepper wings and some beer, and we'll call it we'll call it a day. Andrew, uh, should I ask what we're doing? No, and I've got um, some yummy uh, raspberry vodka and some diet sprite. I'm gonna have a little cocktail. I've got some chocolate covered peanuts, and there's a new rom com on Netflix tonight. Uh, with the guy who was in Lucifer, anybody? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And it looks very cute. So that's my Valentine plan. As a, as a very handsome devil, no it pun is. intended. He's a good looking old man on Lucifer. If you haven't watched Lucifer, go watch the show. It's actually pretty good. I think it's done now, but it's, it's actually a good show. Um, I saw some, and Brody will get this. I saw some blackberry crown crown royal today. Yeah. I almost bought it, but I was. That close to buying it, right? You're right. Crown Royal should be just a traditional, right? Leave, just leave do it alone. straight up. Don't add junk to it. There's just junk. But they flavored it. I'm like, I can flavor oh, anything. Don't, Ugh, no. don't do it. Don't My wife turns Crown Royal out the bottle. No, no damn. High five to her. She doesn't mix. She she said, "Give the glass is the mixer. Pour that in the glass. <laughs> Shoot it around. There you go." And she knocks it back. And I don't drink and drive, does. everybody. That's our uh, don't drink and drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So everyone responsibly. We're at the top of the hour. Andre, thank you so much. Hey, I'm a man of my really word. Good. I will see you in November. Yes. I will see be in Auckland. November. Come down there and hang out. And uh maybe you can let me sit in one of your meetings, right? Nah, man. Uh, I got something better for you. Uh, okay. Uh, and you're we're gonna go for a run. We're gonna go for a run. Oh, oh yes, great. he knows. Yes, yeah. just do it right here. Perfect. We'll go for a run for sure. Can- can we end the show on a moment of silence for Bill Post, the inventor of Pop Tarts, who died at age 96? This for those who do not know, Rod is a true lover of uh, Pop Tarts. So, yes, I think we can do that. 
All right. See you all next week.